And 3D printing, as we have with our EG 3D Printing Lab here, is the perfect example of that iterative process. We have been using the iterative process to develop this podcast, but also to, uh, with everything that we do with our 3D Printing Lab, EG 3D, it's always about, you know, giving it a shot, seeing where it failed. How did the, the print we tried to do, why did it fail? Was it the way we made the model? Was it the way that we had the settings on the printer? Or is it something with the material? Like, there's always a mystery to be found with the iterative process. And if you like a mystery, you'll probably love the iterative process. So we have been working on uh, rocket pens here. It's an idea that we had, and then we saw a few folks talking about it on Twitter. And so we started with the Falcon 9, uh, which we have, and we're developing into a pen. This was my first attempt. It was larger. It kind of reminded me of those, like, fun big pens that you had growing up. And hilariously, this is the most reliable rocket pen that I've made so far, and it is one of the most reliable rockets that we have out there today, especially the one with the most launches. And more to come. The Starship pen was the one that we really fell in love with, and the hilarious thing is, so both these rocket pens use the same ink cartridge, and... While this one was printed with uh, fused filament fabrication, which is kind of the typical, you know, if you've been in a maker lab or a lab at school and you've got like a desktop 3D printer, this is probably what uh, you've seen before. So that's the one with the filament and the hot nozzle. Starship was made on a resin printer using UV light curable resin and building it up. We built it in two pieces and then I put that uh, ink cartridge in and sealed it up. And the cool thing about resin is you can just apply the wet resin, cure it with UV light, and now it's the same as the hard body that you just printed. So we did that. It's now one piece, right, with the ink cartridge in there, but I don't have enough ink thrust. <laughs> it will print, and then uh, like I'll be able to write. But then eventually, after a little bit of ink, it seems to dry out or it stops writing and then it takes a while I have to put the pen down and start back up so the mystery is why is the same ink cartridge working well on this bigger one but not on this one and I think what's going on is that in the bigger pen than the Falcon 9 there's a lot more space around the ink cartridge so there there isn't like a vacuum that's happening. I think on the Starship, there's a vacuum happening on this ink, which is causing it to not flow as much. And then that's why I have to wait. And eventually it'll keep writing, but it keeps drying up. So like, that's the iterative process. So if, if you're wondering why SpaceX can blow up a rocket and still call it a success, that's why. It's because ultimately this was going to blow up. It was either going to go into the ocean, into the Gulf of Mexico for the Super Heavy Booster, off the coast of Hawaii for Starship, but both of them, this was their last launch. And for their last launch, they gave us a, not only a lot of data, but entertainment. I saw so many people take the failure so many different ways. It's a great conversation piece, I think. Launching into space became so routine, especially after 50 years of us doing it right um, and going to the moon and stuff like that. This is the new stuff. This is the entertaining stuff, stuff where we don't know what's going to happen. We know that we stepped foot on the moon. We know that we did it. Do we know that we can create the world's most powerful rocket and make it so that we can go to Mars? We don't yet, but watching them try it is very exciting. So um, really, really looking forward to that in the future. And Good luck to the SpaceX team. It's going to be the, those Raptors, and that Super Heavy is a beast. Um, and I hope whatever happens with the launch pad, whether they're going to put a flame diverter in there now or not, uh, we'll see. But uh, having those big boulders shoot around, and the, the amount of debris that was created by this test is really shows you how big this thing is, how much thrust there is, how much explosive power there is behind this if it goes wrong and just how much it can literally move the Earth <laughs> with the amount of thrust it has. So, yeah, craziness 